The first game in the round of 16 between Imperialist from Russia against Erby from Slovenia for the World Championship 2020 with a cash prize of $500 is all about to begin. We will have Goblins against Random on the map sort of while and the matchup is gonna be a Goblin Mirror in the game number one. Holy guacamole, let's get it started boys. I mean Goblin Mirror is potentially one of the most interesting mirrors actually in Rise of the Witch King. But we shall see. We have the green goblin player Imperialist against the yellow goblin player Erby on the map Sora Wild. This is one of the most recent 1v1 maps actually for Rise of the Witch King. It's a pirate map. By the way, one of the changes of the 8.4 is that the creeps are black now. They used to be grey, if you remember correctly. Now they are black on the minimap and I like this change a lot because sometimes when the players were picking the green, uh, grey color, they had the same color like the creeps and it was kinda distracting. We will have two tunnels into the goblin cave from imperialist. On the other side we have two tunnels into the goblin cave as well. So that means nothing more and nothing less that we're gonna see a lot of goblin wars at the beginning of the game. Let's lot here welcome. Mustafa welcome. Okay guys so uh, what do you guys think about this matchup? I mean like I feel like this is one of the more interesting mirrors in the game just because how goblins work as a faction you have so many different choices you can go for the transition into the fissure immediately into the spider pit immediately you can make multiple goblin caves first and with that being said you have so many different choices I mean we have now three tunnels for both the goblin players and the second goblin cave is coming up already for imperialists imperialists used to play the goblin faction a lot and I'm actually expecting him to have the more experienced part in this mirror. But Irvi should never be underestimated. We will have the second Goblin Cave also coming up for Irvi. And the Goblin Warriors are joining the battlefield now. Warchan has been picked from both the players. And the first Goblin Warrior Battalion from Imperialis is moving forward. The builder from Irvi is at the top side of the map. He's looking to build a tunnel here. Alright. Smokey, welcome to the stream as well, my friends. Alright, so we're gonna see even a Goblin Cave number 3 here from RV. And same also for Imperialist. So 3 Goblin Caves for both the Goblin players. 350 Command Points for Impi, 350 Command Points for RV. The build order is almost identical and everything is looking very identical as well. Okay, so we have at the bottom right side a one Goblin Warrior and the Goblin Warrior from Irby is moving straight through the middle. We have the... that's not the Builder, that's the Builder. <laughs> that's one of the guys who's walking back and down all the time, I don't know what he's doing with his life. That is a Builder, I think he's gonna build one of those tunnels in the middle of the map potentially. And Irby has his build at the top Vision left side and will be building a tunnel here. No, I mean, here. there is only one he Goblin Warrior from Imperialism, so I'm assuming he won't be able to deal any economical damage yet. But he will be able to scout his opponent, which is always nice as well. And so does the yellow goblin player Irby here with his goblin warriors. In a 1v1 situation, obviously goblins against goblins. Irby is using no battle stance. And Impy is using the whole ground, uh, whole ground stance. And let's see, I mean actually with the different choices in terms of um, battle stances. It looks like Imperialist will be able to force his opponent to retreat. But the fight is obviously gonna be like almost the same, like you will kill potentially all each other and the one battalion which will potentially survive will be dying to the poison afterwards. The little Spartan, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. Okay guys, so um, we have now a big push incoming with a lot of goblin warriors from the yellow goblin player Erby. Warchan is still available for both the players. And Imperialis has a tunnel in the middle of the map. But he was not able to scout this tunnel from Irby just yet. So he has no vision control from the attack until now. Now he sees the enemy units finally. And I think Imper Imperialist might be forced to use his Warchan defensively. Nice body blocking here by the way. Just to try to protect this tunnel from getting destroyed. Warchan has been used. Fully commitment here from the yellow goblin player Irby. Imperialist is holding his buff still. So he will definitely lose this fight and he, will, he might also lose all the goblins coming from these two goblin caves afterwards. But he's gonna use his buff actually offensively. And this is one of these decks I like more because he was able to split his goblin army. And he might be potentially able to take down two tunnels at the same time. 
while being able to protect himself quite nicely. Irby on the other side will be committing to one of these goblin caves and manages to take it down. So I would prefer the attack from Imperialis more, just because he was able to take down two of those Anas, which are really important. And I feel like Irby will only be able to take down one of these. So one tunnel to one goblin and one goblin cave against uh, two tunnels, but no goblin cave just yet. But that might change. Never mind. Irby will be able to protect himself. That means, I mean, one resource building and a production building against two resource buildings. I don't know, guys. Now he has only two goblin caves, so that means Irby potentially will be able to outspam his opponent. But Imperialis is now building his fissure already. Potate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good to Bokla I10. Welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for the follow. Okay. So 450 command points for Imperialis, 400 command points for Irby after losing two tunnels instead of one like Imperialis did. And he also not going for the transition just yet into the fissure or for the spider riders or spider links from the spider pit. Actually, oh my god, it's gonna be a close one. Imperialis not microing around very nicely. He might lose this tunnel here. I mean this goblin cave here. Goblin caves is with orc pits the weakest production buildings in the game. They have only 1500 health with level 1. It's gonna be close, but not close enough. Irby won't be able to take it down. The game was freezing a little bit. I hope everything is fine for the players, so they won't have any problems with the legs. Alright, so we have one tunnel here at the bottom right side from Imperialist, though. No, that, that's actually also from Irby. Only those goblin bodies are from Imperialist, okay. So because of the one more production building advantage, I mean, he has one more goblin cave now than Imperialist does, will be obviously able to outspam his opponent, but uh, we have a fissure level 2 now, and I think cave trolls are gonna be on their way. Cave trolls are units we see pretty much all the time in, in, a, in a goblin mirror, regardless which map it is. Okay. So, focusing on this tunnel here, might be able to take it down. We have a lot of units coming also from this area. Powerpoint wise, let me check. We have almost 5 power points collected for the Green Goblin player Imperialist. 450 command points available. 400s now. It might even be 350. This tunnel is almost level 2, by the way. It's gonna be very important to keep it alive. But there are so many units from Imperialist, I mean Irby, still around, focusing down this almost level 2 tunnel. I mean, maybe, maybe the transition into the future level 2 was just too early, and he had to invest so much time and money into the upgrade and into the building itself. And he will not only be able to take down the tunnel, no, he will also be able to take down one of those production buildings. Only one more, one last, two actually. Okay, he was actually building one more. So two goblin caves are remaining. He has only 350 command points available. The troll is finally joining the battlefield. Has to be used for defensive purposes. Cave pads being used from Imperialist as well to debuff the enemy units. Warchan is available, but there is nothing to buff at this point. He has no units around the map anymore. Beside the one cave troll who should be technically able to hold himself and protect those tunnels. But the problem is, that's gonna give Irby so much time. And now he has his own fissure on the field. He might go for the half troll pikeman, but he's gonna go for the upgrade instead for the cave trolls. So 400 command points for Impy. One power point collected after Warchan and cave bats. On the other side, we have 650 command points for the yellow goblin player Irby San. Because that's his name, by the way. He has collected 8 power points after the Warchan. He's 2 power points away from getting the Spider Ally Summon unlocked. Holy moly, guys. Irby is on point. And actually, the attack of him being able to take down one of those production buildings this way. Making sure that Imperialist is not going to be able to spam many more goblins. And then the early transition from Imperialist into the Fissure Level 2. Which apparently is a mistake as the troll is only able to protect this area and can't be used for offensive purposes just yet. And Irby has enough time now to get his own trolls on the field and has still three goblin caves he is using all the time. And has nine power points collected, only one power point away from summoning the spider allies, which can be absolutely devastating. 725 command points without any barrow expansions around the fortress, by the way, against 475 only. And remember, Irby was picking the random, so he didn't pick the Goblin Faction himself, unlike Imperialist, who was pre-picking the Goblin Faction in the game number one. Another tunnel has been taken down from the Russian player Imperialist, and now the game is lagging a little bit more and more and more. I hope we're not gonna have any 
trouble with technical difficulties in this best of five series. The troll is still doing a great job. He has now two uh, trolls on the field. The third one is on its way as well. The rubble might be potentially protected and the tunnel will be rebuilding itself over time. Okay, we have a small fight here and actually Imperialist will be able to take down this tunnel at the top left corner, which is very important because Erby was using this pathway all the time to pressure the Russian player Imperialist at the top side of the map. The three goblin, I mean three cave trolls on the field, two of them are gonna be sent forward. We have also goblin arches now on the field from the yellow goblin player Imperialist. I mean Erby, I'm sorry, because we have two goblins, it's really <laughs> distracting. Now we get also more cave trolls on the field. The game is kind of slowed down at this point because of the cave trolls from Imperialist as he was able to protect himself. There is one here also from Imperialist. So he has in total four cave trolls now. And they are also very efficient, by the way. Even though they cost now 60 command points, if I'm not mistaken, in the version 8.3 they used to cost only um, 45. So we have spider allies ready from the Slovenian player Erby. So they might be used offensively and he might be able to take down multiple tunnels at once. However, you need to know that trolls are a great counter to the spiders. I mean, yes, the spiders, they can technically be able to take down those trolls, but only if they are not paying attention, especially the one with the tree in his hands. Oh, okay, fully commitment here. We have Warchant being used on these goblin warriors and goblin archers. Can he... But GG is incoming and the first game is gonna be over! Erby is leading the best O5 series on the map for a while, he was able to win. He is now two wins away from entering the quarterfinals. And everyone who was betting on Erby, congratulations boys, we're gonna spin our wheel and jump right into the game number two. Holy moly! And we are ready with the game number two. It's gonna be again goblins against random, this time on the beautiful map Sakura Forest 2. Custom hero tournament or riot? <laughs> I don't know, maybe in the future. Okay, goblins against elves actually on the beautiful map Sakura Forest. Let's see, I mean, Irby san picking the random faction two times in a row. And Irby, if you didn't know, made it to the finals of the last year's WCS against Mr. Smoke himself. That was one of the best series I was able to cast so far. It went all the way to the game number 7 in the best of 7 series, in which Irby unfortunately lost against Smoky. But still, you know, won the cash prize of, if I'm not mistaken, $60. At the bottom right side, we have the yellow elven player Irby Sun against the green goblin player Imperialist from Russia. Two tunnels into the goblin cave. Two Malone trees into the barracks. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know about this matchup. I feel like this matchup should be can go either way. Obviously, I mean, even though you would argue with me that this map is very small, but I feel like there are still so many spots you can hide your tunnels at. Like you can maybe sneak one of those tunnels at this side of the map. You can maybe sneak one of them here behind the rocks here offensively. But it might also be a great map for the Elven faction because. You can control the river by building a tower and a statue, for example, and place your army right there. So you can block this pathway entirely. And same goes here at this side of the map as well. It's kind of laggy a little bit, yeah. Also was a little bit laggy in the last game. So I'm actually almost sure that it's not because of me. But just in case if the players want that, we can always ask for another host. Okay, so Warchan has been picked from Imperialist and Rallying Call from Erby. 350 command points for the player from Slovenia, 300 command points for the player from Russia. Two goblin caves now, after two tunnels, so he's gonna go for the early pressure with a lot of goblin spam. On the other side we will have pikemen start from Erby first, he might go for the creep, let's see where they're gonna go for. And it looks like they wanna go for the creep here at this side of the map. And the second unit from Erby are gonna be those Lorian Arches, which makes sense because you will need some of these units to defend yourself. Brown Bear, welcome. Okay. I'm actually curious now if he's gonna go for another Goblin Cave, Goblin Cave number 3, even number 4 potentially, or if he's gonna go for the transition into the Spider Links slash Spider Riders. However, Erby is gonna get this creep uncontested, which is gonna give him some experience. Those Pikemen are gonna hit level 2. And he's gonna get some power points and also, most importantly, some treasure. 
And the first attack is coming from the Goblin Play Imperialist. He's gonna use the Warchan. There is a tunnel at the spot I was mentioning before. Pretty sneaky. And it looks like he's gonna definitely lose at least, at bare minimum, one of those Lorien. Um, I mean, not Lorien Arches. Potentially will lose them as well. The game is freezing. One Marlon Tree is gonna be taken down. I think even the second one might be taken down. Lorien Arches, they gotta be careful. You don't wanna be in melee range against those Goblin Warriors. They are one-shotting them though. Dealing a lot of damage, but you need to disengage now. If you are in a small in a in a melee fight like this, you will lose them, regardless if you are strong or not. Because Lorian Archers, they are like glass cannons. This Malone Tree has been taken down as well. That's a great attack in the game number two from the Russian player Imperialist. And he has to win this. He is 1-0 behind. And that's his only chance if he wants to get a chance to enter the quarterfinals. Lorian Warriors are fighting, they are not buffed. But they are still stronger in a 1v1 situation. It's gonna be close though, and they will be able, I mean, those goblins will be able to deal decent amount of damage. And regardless of the defense of the Elven player, Imperialis was still able to destroy one of two of the most important Malone trees from his opening. That's actually impressive. And goblin spam all around the map. And they were actually able to kill those pikeman units as well, which is really dope. So he will definitely need some more arches. Those arches are really, really badly damaged. Half a battalion remaining only. Same goes to the Lorian Warriors. And the pressure is real. The tunnel here at the bottom right side is still remaining on the field. And Irby has to take it down as soon as possible. During all this time, we have now the transition from two Goblin Caves into the Fissure. So he might go for the Half Troll Swordsman, Half Troll Pikeman, or potentially even the Cave Trolls. But I feel like in this matchup, Half Troll Swordsman against no calf and even against calf half troll swordsman they really don't have a great counter in my opinion you will need multiple archers to deal the damage they are very tanky dealing tons of damage and they are also very great choice against calf as they can't get trampled down and mp just keeps up the pressure all the time playing a great game here with the goblin faction lorian archers are here they are trying to defend but there is just too many of them and the game is freezing every couple of seconds, which is kind of annoying to deal with, I'm assuming, for the players. Especially for um, Irby, who has to defend himself all the time. But it's looking great now for the Russian player Imperialist. He has 500 command points, 4 power points collected. The builder here from Irby has to be careful. Running for his life, but Lord in Arches, he should be able to defend. The only good thing right now for Irby is the fact that he has uh, potentially an army advantage. Now he has multiple archers. And he's getting more of these on the field. But the problem is uh, that he is really behind in terms of power points and also in terms of command points. He has 300 command points only. And almost 3 power points collected against 4. So more than 1 power point advantage and 200, 200 command points advantage for the Russian player Imperialist. Who is creeping the Vorklinger at the right side of the river at the same time. And he's gonna creep even this one here at the left side. At his own side of the map. And yeah, he's gonna go for the low, um, half troll swordsman indeed. The tunnel here is still on the field, by the way. Irby wasn't able to see this just yet. So Imperialist can use this over and over again. But Elven player was now finally able to see this tunnel. However, I'm pretty sure those Lorian warriors, they won't be able to take it down. As Imperialist is paying attention. Exiting the tunnel from, with those goblin warriors. And they should be more than enough to defend. Razel King X1, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. So two creeps secured also from the Russian player. At the same time, half troll swordsmen. They are getting damage and they're gonna beat. Oh, that's a nice beat actually. And that's a very early rallying call here from the Alvin player. They are trying to chase them down, but even if you take them down, I think it's not worth it. Now, Imperialis has the buff advantage and he might just go for a, for a big attack from this side of the map. He has also half troll swordsman here. And just be patient now. Because the buff has a long cooldown early on. And you can now build at least one more half troll swordsman. Group with all of them. Oh, he's gonna use the war chant very early. So it looks like he doesn't wanna waste any time. And now buffed units against non-buffed units. There is not even a leadership existing. And in the worst case, he can go for the cave pads as well. Is it too early though? Are they getting targeted here from those Lorian arches? That's what I wanna know. Uh, no, they are actually attacking the goblins instead, so they are getting nerfed, kind of, <laughs> I mean debuffed. And half troll swordsmen, they are gonna be very strong as the damage from those Lorian archers are, is getting reduced by those cave pads. 
Uh, Elven player is trying to play a little bit offensively by taking down those tunnels. He will be able to take it down. He will be losing those uh, pikemen afterwards. Lorian archers are still buffed. They should be... No, never mind. This Malon tree is going to be taken down, taken down regardless. Uh, another Malon tree has been taken down. Lorian archers are dying. After all, Swordman are just tanky. They're going to even commit to that fight around the fortress of his opponent. 500 command points still for Imperialist. He has still only three production buildings. He's going to build another tunnel here around his fortress. He has five power points collected. Can go for the Tainted Land. I feel like Tainted Land is the way to go now because you can group and then you have like a second buff. So when Warchan is on cooldown, you can use your Tainted Land and you can dive in. 550 command points, 400 command points for Urbisan. He has nearly seven power points collected. I'm assuming he's aiming for either the Elvin Wood or hopefully for the Mist. I feel like Elvin Wood is a risky choice against goblins because they can simply uh, you know, counter that with their own Tainted Land. While your Elven Wood costs 10, command, uh, 10 power points, their Tainted Land costs only 5 power points. The double barracks, but the problem is, he keeps losing those Malon trees all the time. There is only one of them being close to hit level 2, and that's this one in the front. On the other side, those tunnels here from Imperialis are already level 2. So he's getting 75 command points from each of them, and the Spider Pit has been built up as well. Irby is obviously fighting until the end. That's what I'm expecting him to do in the WCS, in the cash prized tournament for Rise of the Witch King. Okay, we have more Goblin Warriors coming with Half Troll Swordman. He's not gonna give up this tunnel for free. Lorian Warriors are kind of protectless. The archers and the, are still doing a great job against the Goblin Warriors. The pikemen have to be in position against those Half Troll Swordsmen to protect those archers. Kill the Goblin Warriors first, because they are like glass cannons, you're gonna take them down very fast. But during all this time, look how much commitment is here from Imperialist. He has so many units on the field, and forcing his opponent to split the army, which should only favor the Goblin player himself. I think this Malon tree is gonna be taken down, there are still many Goblins attacking that. And that should be enough to destroy one of the last remaining Malon trees from the player from Slovenia. Level 2 archers now, and he's also not building a statue here, which is kind of interesting, because I feel like leadership could be definitely helpful. Zo is like a well. Mirror of Galadriel could be very useful in this situation as well. After all, Swatman are so strong that they can obviously just, you know, ignore those Lorian archers and take down this Malon tree anyway. We have 750 command points, by the way, for the Russian player. 5 power points collected after the Tainted Land, which was used defensively. Cave pads and Warchan, I mean, not defensively, but to protect this tunnel. It's obviously at the opening side of the map, so it's not defensively at all. On the other side, we have 3525, so, I mean, Imperialist has doubled the command points of his opponent. But he has 10 power points collected now. I mean, he's obviously also behind in terms of um, power points, more than 6 power points behind. And he's gonna go for the Mist, indeed. Mist can give him a chance to, you know, defend a big attack from the Goblin Warrior, because it's gonna... Make your units pretty much invisible. You're gonna debuff the enemy units as well. But I feel like the transition into a hero or into this Mirkwood is gonna be pretty much needed very fast. Because sooner or later, you will have spider riders on the field as well. And he doesn't have that many pikemen around. As he is forced to spam many, many Lorian archers. And yeah, the transition is needed. But however, he can't afford the transition just yet. He's out of money. He's out of command points. And losing this one is gonna drop him down to actually 250 command points. He has only one, Mar one Malon tree remaining on the field, and that's this one. He's obviously building more and more, fighting until the very end. He has still some units around the field, but imagine, you know, Spider Riders in this situation. There is like quite a battalion of <laughs> pikemen that's not gonna be enough to protect those archers against two battalions of Spider Riders. We have one of them here already. Mist and Riding Cold is gonna be ready for the next fight. What are we building? On the other side, we have Warchant ready and Keith Bats ready. So it's pretty much buff and debuff for both the players is gonna be available for the next attack and defense. During all this time, MP is just expanding very nicely with those tunnels all around the map. And he's going for a big attack now. Warchant has been used on these units, by the way. And all he needs to do is kill those archers, kill those two last remaining Malon trees, three. And then you should be good to go. The game is freezing a little bit from time to time, which 
kind of scares me a little bit. <laughs> and he's gonna commit now fully. Uh, Keith Bats will be used. He needs to use the Mist here. Rallying Cole is gonna be used. And Shrouding Mist is gonna be used as well. But a little bit too late because the Trample damage was already killing so many of these Lurian Archers. That's why the Riders are over committing. He will be taken down, but it's absolutely fine because he has such an upper hand that going even in those trades is absolutely fine. Herbie is gonna call it GG well played. The game is gonna be over and we're gonna jump right into the first tiebreaker game in the best of five series. The Vsnam the underscore Drew just resubscribed for 11 months. Ahoy, go Imperialist Vohayo beyond 53 Ison. The first tiebreaker game in the best of five series in the last series of the round of 16 for the world championship between Ervi from Slovenia against Imperialist from Russia. Goblins against Mordor on the map, Westfold, edit boys. Let's see who's gonna have the advantage after the game number three. We have the Green Goblin player Imperialist from Russia, one of the biggest favorites definitely for the WCS, but so is the yellow model player Erby from Slovenia, his opponent in the round of 16. There we go, whoever wins this series by the way, whoever wins the best of 5 series has to fight in the quarterfinals against DJ Premier. It's gonna be amazing as well. Alright, two tunnels from Imperialist. Two slaughterhouses from the model player into the orc pit first, into the goblin cave. So we're gonna have goblins against orcs first. However, I'm ex I'm still expecting even to the nerf of the of the mountain trolls from the model faction. I am still expecting to see some of those mountain trolls this game. Ilu Watsa 95, welcome. Zodi, welcome. Satislo, welcome. Mr. B, Mr. Piggy Poo, Man Merker. Thank you so much for uh, guys thank you so much for tuning in all right two slaughterhouses orc pit into the third one mr piggy likes to play the motor faction a lot and uh, let's see if erby manages to impress mr piggy Poo himself two tunnels into the goblin cave warchan has been picked from impi and erby didn't pick anything just yet erby can always go for the warchan himself but i'm assuming in you know many situations, like in 8 out of 10 games, we will see Mordor starting with the Eye of Sauron instead. Just because you can, after the Eye of Sauron, collect 10 more power points and get Industry unlocked. And even though Westwald can favor the Goblin faction a little bit more than the Mordor faction, I feel like Mordor also likes those big maps. Just because how Mordor works as a faction, I feel like Mordor is still one of those factions which is not the greatest at the beginning of the game but can be the greatest and even beyond that in the late game. As the goblins are struggling against flyers and Mordor can actually get three flying heroes at some point on the field and that's gonna be a nightmare for every goblin player. All right, so in a 1v1 situation, obviously goblins are gonna be able to out damage, out sustain, out run those orc warriors with their poison blades. But the fight is not going to be one-sided. I mean, it's going to be kind of even fight. Uh, we have now um, whole ground stands being used from both the players, by the way, in this 1v1 skirmishes. Very close fight, though. I mean, the goblin player will still be able to win that. But it's actually very great here for the model player. I mean, he was able to kill so many goblin warriors that those units, they won't be able to do anything anymore. And we have already three orc pits up on the field for Erby against two goblin caves so far. He has also only two tunnels around the fortress and was already building the third one kind of more offensively. The builder here from Imperialist is at the bottom side, building one of these tunnels here at the corner. You might go for the war creep here at the bottom right side afterwards. And uh, I'm actually wondering when the transition is gonna be into the... And there is a tunnel here as well, by the way, at the top left side. Right, he was already able to sneak one of those tunnels here, close to the side of his opponent. And I feel like Erby wasn't able to see that. And that's gonna be the first big push, with a lot of goblin warriors from Imperialist. Warchan is available by the way, and model player Erby still didn't pick anything just yet. So he will at least, at least lose two slaughterhouses at bare minimum. He missed the Warchan on these goblin warriors though, so they are not buffed at all. 
if I'm not mistaken. I can see them glowing as well, so they are definitely not buffed. Slaughterhouse is gonna get demolished by Irby to deny the power points and experience. Otherwise, they would hit level 2, by the way. The Slaughterhouse here won't be getting demolished just yet. And the Fortress should be shooting down these Goblin Warriors first. Because this is gonna be taken down regardless. But we have Orcs now joining the battlefield and I think with the help of the Fortress and the Orcs they should be able to keep the Slaughterhouse alive for now. But losing two Slaughterhouses is still a big deal. Eye of Sauron is gonna be used offensively. Eye of Sauron is obviously not as powerful as the War Chant buff because it's gonna increase your damage and armor only by 33%. While the Warchan does the same trick, but 50% each, which is obviously better. I mean, Eye of Sauron on top of that is also gonna give you combat experience, so your units are gonna end up leveling faster, which by the way is very important on these Orc Warriors, because once they are level 2, the Bloodthirsty is gonna increase their damage also by 25% passively. That also stacks with the leadership of the Eye of Sauron. Okay, we have right now 500 command points for the goblin player, but he has barely any units around. Look at this. I mean, he has like two goblin caves only and the fissure level two up on the field. And once again, I feel like that's the same mistake Imperialist did in the game number one. He went for a transition into the fissure upgrade very fast. They want to change the host after. I'm absolutely fine with that. The tunnel is going to be taken down. And now he's only sitting on 450 command points and more orcs are coming. He has to deal with. And once again, like in the game number one, in the Goblin Mirror on the map Sorowile, I feel like the transition is just a little bit too fast and he can't keep up the pressure any longer. He has one half a battalion of Goblin Warriors trying to take down the Slaughterhouse. They have also the Troll Cage up on the field, so we will definitely see Mountain Trolls versus Cave Trolls at this point. I mean, obviously, Mordor has the upper hand because he can get those mountain trolls on the field with level 1 troll cage, while the goblin player has to upgrade his fissure first to level 2. But obviously, in this structure, you are also able to make half troll swordsmen, half troll pikemen, giants, and even fire drakes. So you can't, you know, kind of compare that. But if you just compare the mountain trolls to cave trolls, Mordor has the advantage, definitely. 3 power points collected, 400 command points available for Imperialist. We have 450 command points collected and 5 power points almost available for Irby. So he's a little bit more than 5 power points away from getting the industry power spike. And I can see it myself, the game is freezing from time to time. And I feel like we should definitely try another host. Maybe, maybe Anubis is around and we can ask him. Anubis, I think, has a great host. 5 power points. 5 power points away, and the orc spam is real, I mean he is making a great use of these 3 production buildings against only 2. And that's what I mean, you know, goblin player at this point, he has to play very defensively. Like he can't go for any counter attack because he will never have a unit advantage. Just because he made the transition just a little bit too early for my personal taste, but I mean I can't really judge Imperialist, who is one of the greatest players of Rise of the Witch King, but still, you know, playing FFG games, playing games for fun, versus playing games in a competitive way for a cash prize tournament, the pressure is gonna be a different one, and you will potentially end up playing a little bit worse than you, than you would normally play, just because you are nervous and you have this weird pressure on yourself. Okay. So 6 power points collected by Irby, I mean Imperialist almost, he has almost he has now the power points obviously for the Tainted Land or uh, for the Cave Bats, 450 command points available, almost 7 power points collected for Irby's son, 450 command points available as well. Irby has to make sure to expand at the very same time as his pressuring his opponent all the time. One of the Goblin Caves has been even taken down and the, one of the most important tunnels is gonna be taken down as well. Just run for your life now. And Eta Orc. Eta Orc, by the way, in the current version of the 8, of the 2.02, 8.4, got, he's gonna go for the next map, <laughs> got nerfed. Now you have 30 seconds cooldown on this Eta Orc ability, so you can't eat up all the time and then just heal up to full health in like 2 seconds. That's not possible. As you, I think, regenerate only around 33% of your missing health with eating an Orc, if I'm not mistaken, but you will potentially see that now. Is there are more arcs coming and he might eat one of them. Okay, so 7 power points collected by MP, 
8 power points collected by Mordo. 550 command points against 400 command points. The troll had, was able to eat, I think. No, this was the one which was damaged. The cave troll, unlike a mountain troll, doesn't have such an ability, so he has no sustain until he hits level 2. That also got nerfed. So the amount of experience cave trolls or slash mountain trolls can actually gain is nerfed. So that means they will need to kill more structures, more units to level up to level 2. I mean, uh, the pressure is real and just because of the two goblin caves only, the goblin player isn't able to push him back. And just take a look into the minimap of yours. So it's yellow all, over the, all around the place. We have three orc pits, all of them are still only level 1. He's gonna even make some of these orc arches now, making actually three orc arches at the same time. Troll Cage is level 1 as the fourth production building. Nine power points collected by Impi. Ten power points finally collected now by Irby. And he will potentially use his industry on this one here, which has the protection of these two orc pits. Okay, we have a fight. Oh, nice one here with the poison arrows. Oh, this level 2 troll is gonna be taken down as well. Nice one here from Imperialist. This tunnel here unfortunately will be taken down as well. And Impi is losing more and more command points and more and more map control. But he's gonna use the Spider Ally Summon. And he has also one of these cave trolls taking down one of those slaughterhouses from the model player Irby. I mean, he didn't use industry just yet, right? He didn't use it just yet. Maybe that's a smart idea to not use it right now. Because you might... Wait, what's happening here? Oh my god, they were actually moonwalking for a second. And every second matters, by the way, because the time remaining is going down very fast. Splitting the spider uh, spider summon to take down multiple slaughterhouses at once. You will at least be able to take down three. The troll was able to take down this one. The spider's gonna be able to take down this one, this one, and also this one should be potentially taken down. Even though those orcas are dealing surprisingly a lot of damage. But he can always reposition themselves around this area. Alright. Also, this lot of house is gonna be taken down. Very nice spider ally is summoned here. Unfortunately for the goblin player, he wasn't able to take down this level two and a half. And luckily for the model player, he wasn't he didn't use the industry just yet. So just wait until the spiders are gone and use it on this one. But that was maybe enough time for the goblin player. Now he might go for a counter-attack. He has also two goblin caves now, a lot of goblin warriors on the field. 500 command points for Mordor, 500 command points for the goblin player. So it's actually even once again, also in terms of power points, it's very even. If he can take down this level 2 slaughterhouse here, it would be so nice for Imperialist, but I feel like that's not gonna be possible. Irby has to use the industry now, finally has been used right now. So he's gonna get a lot of resources from this level, almost 3 slaughterhouse. 200% uh, increased resources, which is amazing. Goblin player at some point might also go for some Lumber Mills. I think like Lumber Mills is a great choice on the map Westfold because there are, you know, decent amount of trees around, around this area especially. You can build multiple Lumber Mills. I have Sauron is going to be used. We have a level 2 cave, uh, cave troll here, but he unfortunately grabbed a tree. I mean, the reason why I'm saying unfortunately is because you can't undone it. You can't choose a tree and get rid out of the tree any longer. In a, in, in a situation like this, maybe grabbing a goblin and throwing it in middle of the army would be the better choice because of the fear effect. Okay, and he's very low. Luckily, he's level 2, so he will have the self regeneration over time. Warchan is gonna be used, which is better than the Eye of Sauron. Eye of Sauron has to be moved, by the way, on top of these orc archers. Troll is diving in, kinda left alone here, there is no backup, and he won't be able to get away, and another mountain troll from the model player Irby Sun is gonna be taken down. And Goblin player is kinda coming back into the game, 550 command points available, 650 command points available, but look at the resources from the model player, he has almost 2000 resources collected, and with 3000 he has enough for the Fell Beast. So he might go for the Felbys, even though he keeps making more trolls and more orcs all the time. So it will need a little bit more than uh, a little bit more than uh, two more minutes, I guess, to have around 3,000 resources collected if he can keep those slaughterhouses alive. Especially this one, which is level three, giving him a lot of cash, 94 each tick, by the way, and also 100 command points. 
Okay, so it's the it's the time now from Imperialist to go for a counter attack potentially with those gift with this one gift troll. The other one was also able to survive him if I'm not mistaken. The level two one, but I can't see him on the field anymore. So maybe he's actually here. Alright, he was here protecting this tunnel first. He's also gonna heal up over time. Uh you know, that's not from <laughs> that's not from MP by the way, that's from MP. That's the same type of gift trolls. The neutral one on the map. We have also a lot of goblin archers on the field now. Level 2, level 2, level 1. One troll was able to sneak through uh, to the goblin cave and he will be able to take it down. Dealing so much damage but also the fact that goblin caves are with the orc pits the, the weakest barracks in the game. With only 1500 health level 1 means they can get destroyed quite easily in compared to all of the kingsmen from Engma to Hall of Warriors from the Dwarven faction especially because Hall of Warriors has with level 1 40,000 health actually. Almost unkillable. Another slaughterhouse has been taken down with this cave troll. This one is very important and Irby has to make sure to keep it alive. And the game is freezing from time to time all the time and that's very annoying to deal with. I can actually understand the players if they complain about the lags. The troll here is not gonna heal up over time, he's level 1 only. And the game is freezing absolutely now. Okay. It's gonna grab a rock. And he keeps losing those slaughter houses all the time. Left and right. But even building a barricade expansion around the fortress. Level 2 cave troll will also be able to get away. That's actually huge. While the other cave troll from Imperialis is devastating the orc archers here. From Irby. Oh, don't go in a choke point like this. Oh, he's so lucky that this troll wasn't attacking. Because if you are in a small area like this, he might kill with one hit all your archers at once. The okay, one cave troll has been taken down. Warchan has been used on those orc archers, by the way, from the model player. If almost 11 power points collected for MP, and he has 700 command points available. I have Sauron for the double buff action, and remember. Uh, the goblin player doesn't have the cave pad, so he can't nullify the enemy leadership here. And with the double buff, those orc archers, they're gonna deal decent amount of damage, don't underestimate them. Another tunnel has been taken down. Another tunnel has been taken down. Those trolls from both the players that are doing work in the game number 3, boys, on the map Westfold. Orc archers are kinda splitting up, because he was using the thrower goblin ability. The fear is actually coming in clutch. In this situation, if your opponent ends up using that multiple times, what you can always do with the Moro faction is get Gothmog on the field. Just because of the main army from the Moro player Irby is still based on those orcs and orc archers, uh, Gothmog is going to be very effective. He's going to give you leadership with level 1 for your orcs, ar orc archers and orcs, and he will give you with uh, level 2, I guess, the fear resistant. Which is amazing, or level 5. If I'm, not, I don't, I'm with level 5 actually. With level 2 you have the theory. With level 5 you have the ability for the fear resistant. Which is very important in this situation. Because those cave trolls, they can always use to find uh, the goblin troll ability. This tunnel is going to be taken down as well. We have 13 power points collected now. The troll has to be careful. He has to run for his life. Should be able to get away. He's level 2 and he can always eat a orc. Not a big deal. Spider allies summon is going to be ready whatsoever. And it will be used um, where he was using it here offensively at the bottom left side or at the top left side. There is a level 3 cave troll and those spider spiderlings, they're gonna be able to take down this level 3 slaughterhouse with the industry buff. But ladies and gentlemen, it's alright. We have Camille, the fell beast himself. And just being able to scare the spiders away, the spider lion summon will be absolutely useless. And those cave trolls, they gotta watch out now because Camille is gonna hunt them down. And one of them, the level 3 one here, is gonna be taken down first. But the worm will be summoned at the very same time from the Russian player Imperialist. What a game number 3. And the worm, ladies and gentlemen, is doing so much work. He will be able to kill the two orc pets and the level 3 slaughterhouse and even the troll cage potentially gonna be taken down that's huge and massive what a worm summon motor player on the other side has 10 power points collected since he was going for the water churn after the eye 
Otherwise, he would have also 15 power points collected by now and could be summoning his own worm, which could be also very devastating in this situation. Luckily whatsoever for Irby is the fact that he will be not losing his cave troll, I mean troll cage. Alpha health is gone by the way with one hit only. And he has industry back up, so he can use it again. He has 500 command points, but the problem is all the slaughterhouses remaining on the field from Irby are still only level 1. But I actually have big faith in the Camille in the Fell Beast. Because that's gonna force Imperialists to spam many, many Goblin Archers. And um, hope for the best, pretty much. Uh, with the Screech, you can always actually kind of mess them up. And for the Fear Resistant, for the Goblin Faction, you wanna get God Kill the Goblin King on the field. With the level 2 Skull Totem, which is gonna give you the buff of Warchan, 50% damage and armor. It's also gonna give you Fear Resistant. Which, by the way, I feel like is going to be very much needed in the matchup Mordor against Goblins, just because how Mordor as a faction works. Yeah, you have Drama Trolls for the, for the Fear ability with the Roar, you have the Fell Beast, obviously with the Screech, you have even a Gatewatcher expansion, which can also fear, your, uh, fear the enemy units pretty much, right? So you have a lot of fear, and I feel like Gorkil the Goblin King could be a great choice against the Mordor faction. There is a battle tower with 1500 health. Every single battle tower now in 8.4 have 1500 health. Besides the lone tower summoned from the Man of the West, which still has 2500 health, by the way. 13 power points collected. Alright, so we have uh, Warchan and Eye of Sauron. One of these cave trolls has been taken down. The mountain troll might die to the poison. He needs to find the orc and eat it really fast. He doesn't want to die. We have also Haradrim Palace level 1. The troll is gonna suicide here for no reason. He's diving in. We'll get a decent hit off. Impy has to focus him down really fast, actually. Now he does. We have more trolls joining the battlefield. That's gonna be enough to forest Imperialist back now. But we have almost 15 power points collected and Camille is coming now. He's level 4. And 15 power points, I'm assuming he's gonna go for the worm himself. And use it offensively. Take down this three production buildings and a couple of tunnels. He will need that right now. Okay. I'm actually curious what he's going to choose. 625 command points for Mordor. 800 command points for Imperialist. 9 power points collected after Worms, Spiders and the War Chant. He has the advantage right now. Because he already was picking a 15 power point spell. And he can now go straight to the 25. Ooh, massive hit here. But it's a risky one. He has Screech though. Okay, he should be fine now. The Mountain Troll was able to take down one of these tunnels. And the Worm will be summoned indeed. And he's gonna take down the Fissure level 2 first. He has time to take down the Goblin Caves as well. And leave the Goblin player without any production building. All he needs to do is place himself right here. And then attack this one. And the Fire will be attacking also the second one at the same time. And that's gonna be also the case. He's gonna be taking down the level 2 tunnel first. The goblin player is gonna drop more and more command points. I mean, command points, that, you know, they don't matter that much for the goblin faction because in the worst case scenario, they can always use the burrow expansions to get command points. He's gonna go for the cave beds now, by the way, which will be used. Uh, where he's gonna use it? I can't see that. He's gonna use it here on this, uh, on the enemy orc arches, I'm assuming, and on the, on the enemy orcs. The worm is not doing anything from Irby here, by the way. That's kind of unfortunate. He had the time he needed to kill the goblin caves as well. But Irby is not paying attention. I mean, he has a lot of stuff to do, but the worm is something you really need to pay attention about because you have so much pressure with the worm summon to kill plenty of production buildings and resource buildings at the same time. And again, the industry buffed slaughterhouse is still remaining on the field. And for that reason, Modo is still getting a decent amount of resources over time. There is a tunnel at the top right side with a catapult expansion around the fortress. Orc pits and the slaughter, I mean, Orc pits and the Haradrim Palace are still only level 1. And even though we have seen a level 2 troll cage, he never vents for the. Oh, he's gonna call it GG anyway. He's gonna call it GG anyway. And the game number 3 will be won by Irby San. And the score once again is 2 1 for Irby. As he's only one win away from entering the quarterfinals. Pretty damn good. What a nice game, boys. We're gonna jump right into the game number four now.
The game number four, Engmar against Goblins, this time on the map, Jungles of Farharat. Erby is leading 2-1 right now. And this game could be the deciding game in the round of 16, in the last round of 16 match for the World Championship. Let's get it started. We have the Green Goblin player, Imperialist, against the Yellow Engmar player, Erby. That's the first time Irby is picking the Engmar faction in this best of 5. The first game was a Goblin Mirror. The second game was Goblins against Elves, which Imperialists won as Goblins. The third game was Goblins by Imperialists against the Mordor faction, which Mordor player Irby was able to win on Westfold edit. And now for the first time, Irby is playing the Engmar faction, while Imperialist is always picking the Goblin faction in every single game so far. Two tunnels into the Goblin Cave, actually a very early Goblin Cave. Normally on this map we can see that players are building multiple uh, resource buildings first. Okay. Alright, so I told you, right? So it's not about me, <laughs> it's I think about Erby because he's like having a Wi-Fi problem or something. But it's good, you already know that it's not good when you send a message and it gets duplicated. <laughs> Alright, so two tunnels into the Goblin Cave. On the other side, we have two mills into the Hall of the Kingsmen, into the third mill from the player from Slovenia, Ervi himself. Vorchan is ready for both the players. And let's get it started. I mean, what could happen potentially in this game and in this matchup? Um, I feel like Ervi might go for a second Hall of the Kingsmen, even potentially for a third one. But he might also always go for the transition into the Troll in Wolf Den. That's always a possibility as well. On the other side, same goes to Imperialist. He can make like 3, 4, 5 Goblin Caves at once. But he can always go for the Spider Lynx from the Spider Pit. Spider Riders. Mobile units on a map like Jungles of Far Harad could be great. Also Fissure into the Half Troll Swordsman could be a solid choice. But we shall see. For now he's gonna build a second Hall of the Kingsman. Just to be able to keep up with the spam of the goblins. In a 1v1 situation, Gundabad warriors, they should be able to win against the goblin warriors. But, uh, you can always try to snipe down the Trailmaster in the back side of the, of the battalion. And in a 1v1 situation, it's not gonna be one-sided, it's gonna be still close fight. And the poison damage might do some great work also against the Gundabad warriors. And that's what I mean. Look, he's gonna focus on the Trial Master. We need to keep an eye on the Trial Master here, definitely. He's losing health over time. They are, he's gonna use the aggressive stance. Gundabad Warriors are using the Hold Crown stance. And the fight is not one sided at all. It's very close, actually. Yeah, the Gundabad Warriors, as expected, will be able to win the fight. But they might lose two more units here to the poison, and that's gonna be the case. Now we have three Gundabad Warriors pushing forward. And those goblins, as they are badly damaged, they shouldn't be able to deal any kind of economical damage. Imperialist was building a tunnel here at the top right side. He has two goblin caves, uh, two goblin caves still up on the field, building now the third one. We have two Hall of the Kingsmen so far. Warchan is available for both the players. Engma has 350 command points, 400 command points for the goblin player. Imperialist now. Let's see how much damage Irby might be able to deal with those two and a half battalions of Gundabad warriors. Two battalions actually. The half a battalion was sent back, if I'm not mistaken. Which makes sense because Gundabad warriors, I mean the Trial Master units in general, as you can see, are respawning over time, even when they're only level 1. So, saving this unit um, is always a great thing for Engma. Okay, Warchan might be used here. He's gonna commit to that, but he has a lot of goblin warriors inside. By the way, Umarf, I for, I didn't see your follow. Thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. Okay, 450 command points. He's gonna force the uh, Engma player back. He needs to be careful, by the way. Irby has to watch out that the Trial Master is not gonna get sniped down. That's why you need to always position yourself so your normal units are in the front. Oh! Wait a second. Oh, it was close, actually. He almost lost the Trial Master units here. Uh... Goblin player will be able to win this fight, because he has just many more units on the field than the Engmar player has. And the game is still freezing a little bit from time to time, even on the host from, to uh, from Talos. Okay. And no one was creeping anything just yet as well, so all the creeps are still remaining on the field. We have two work layers in the middle, left and right. And then one 
at the bottom side and one at the top side, as well as troll layers at the top right and bottom left. The two troll layers and four work layers, just like in the map uh, Holy Edit and also like in the map Forts of Eisen. Okay. No one was using his buff just yet. I'm assuming Imperialist is not gonna use his buff here, which would not make any sense because he already lost many of these units. Uh, what MP will plan to do, he has now three Goblin Keeps and a Spider Pit level 1. He's gonna go for the Spiderlings as well. So he has four production buildings against only two from Irby. And again, this is a map which is favoring the Goblin faction big time. It's a, it's a very big map, the builder has to be careful. Can I get damage a little bit? If Irby doesn't pay attention, he might even lose the builder, but he does pay attention and will be able to get away. Oh, be careful here, Irby. Irby might lose one more battalion uncontested. Running away from the Goblin Warriors is never a choice because they will be outrunning you all the time. So if they're gonna chase you, just stand still and fight. Deal at least some damage in return, unless you have a huge reinforcements coming to spot the army. But for every Gundabad warrior Irby has on the field, right now Impy has like three Goblin Warriors himself. And because of the transition into the Spider Lynx, which by the way is amazing in this map, they are quite mobile, they are very strong for 300 resources, they are dealing decent amount of damage and can, you know, can use for pressure, for harassment, can also use, can also be used against the Wolf Riders, which are not existing right now, but he might always go for the transition and he's doing it right now, by the way. The troll in Wolfden is coming up now for Irby. And Warchand is still unused from both the players so far. Okay, he, he will, okay, never mind. He's gonna use the Warchand here on those four battalions of Gundabad warriors. He's gonna use it now. And he will commit to one of these tunnels. Uh, actually not. He chooses to retreat. Maybe waiting for more units to come. He's running now for his life. <laughs> I think he's gonna wait for the, for the Wolf Riders now. Potentially this one is gonna turn into the Wolf Riders. And yeah, that's gonna be the case. Again, Wolf Riders are great, a great choice against the Goblin Warriors. But only if they are in a 1v1 situation or 1v2 situation pot potentially. But when there are too many Goblin Warriors, you wanna look for a flank damage. You don't wanna ride through them inside the middle of the enemy units. That's not what you want to do with Kev, because you will end up losing every single one of them. Nice defense here on the level 2 mil, almost level 2 mil. 5 power points almost collected by Engma player. The same amount of uh, command, I mean, power points also for Imperialist, 550 command points against 500 command points. So it's pretty even right now, because nothing too crazy happened just yet. Oh, the Trollmaster has to be careful here. Irby is losing one of these without turning them into anything, which is unfortunate. He could turn them into the pikemen. And fight those spiderlings, no big deal. They are just building up a huge army now. And even though we didn't see too much early on, we're gonna see a big fight right now. And the game is freezing so much. Okay. Multiple, two battalions of wolf riders, three battalions of wolf riders actually, a lot of Gundabad warriors, let's see. But no pikemen and no extrovers. Warchant has been used offensively. And MP is gonna be forced to use his own buff defensively now. I mean, Impi's Warchant was definitely better. Because Irby wasn't able to hit one of these uh, one of these wolf riders. And look how many goblin warriors are here, that's crazy. And here's even the cave pad, but Felvin is available. Belvin will be used, that's a huge, look at this, <laughs> they're flying to the sky, there we go, like, there are just too many of them, but Felvin is powerful, doesn't care how many units are there, it's gonna hit everything. Even though, with the Felvin, this fight is good fight for Imperialists, amazing fight for Imperialists, because Felvin, if there is no follow-up, is not gonna deal any damage, it's gonna buy you some time, but he has key pads. Which, by the way, is equal like a double buff. And Warchant is gonna get reduced by the cave pads from his opponent. And he has just too many goblin warriors to deal with. Now he's going for the fissure as the fifth production building, by the way. After three goblin caves and a spider pit level one. 
spiderlings here are forest retreat they might die here to this pikeman they are level three though they should be able to get away and heal up over time there's also many of these spiderlings on the fields now and they should be easily able to take down this mill here no big deal and he actually keeps spamming those spiderlings all around the place 800 command points for imperialist four power points collected after cave bats and war chant on the other side we have two power points only for Irvi after Felwind and Vorchan. So you can see yourself that in terms of power points and also command points, Imperialist is definitely ahead. In the game number four, the builder has been taken down as well here. It's so laggy though. The builder from Irvi Ur has been taken down. He has only level one uh, Hall of the Kingsman and, and a level one Troll and Wolf then. Doesn't even go for the wolf packs, which makes sense in the sit in the situation. Wolf packs are only great against pikemen, but they are not very great against anything else. Actually, there are just too many goblins, just too many of them. And the game is freezing big time. It's it's even worse than it was before. Actually, he's gonna go for the trample. He has a lot of wolf riders though, and they are doing a great job. But the Spikemen are dying, those Kundabat warriors are dying as well. And Goblin play is untouched so far. He's gonna go for the half troll Swordsman. half troll Swordsman against the current army from the Engmar player Erby is a great choice. They can't get trampled down by the Wolf Riders. They, can't, they can win the 1v1 fight against the Gundabat warriors. They can win the 1v1 fight against the Pikemen, no big deal. So I feel like half troll Swordsman in this current situation is the best possible choice. Of units for the goblin player imperialist unless Irby is gonna get those dark ranges on the on the field later on but he's far away from doing that like far far away all of the kingsmen are still on the level one and because Irby has to keep spamming units all the time he can't afford an upgrade like this look his money is pretty low and he's almost command points capped as well and he's forced to play very defensively painted line is available for the goblin player as well Spider right, Spiderlings are doing a great job harassing. They are also faster. They should be able to get away from those uh, Wolf Riders. No big deal. On the other side, five power points collected, which can be used for them for the Snowbind. And a Spider Pit level two now on the field for the Spider Riders. I mean, both the signal fires are under control from Irby, and he has a great amount of vision control. But the problem is. He can't fight the army right now. He can't outpower and out spam the goblin player right now. Who has almost full command points without any expansions around the fortress. And has obviously four goblin caves, spider pit level two and a fissure. He has in total six production buildings against the Engmar players three. Actually two because he doesn't make any units from this one. He only uses those Hall of the Kingsmen for now. And he never made any wolf packs so far. Warchan has been used. The mill is going to be taken down. Now we have Haftroll Swatman on the field, which is going to make it much, much harder for the Engmar player Irby to deal with. And it looks like, boys, we're going to see a game number five in the best of five series in the last series of the World Championships round of 16. And the last match, the last map remaining actually is Bots of Eisen. So we're gonna see it on Forts of Eisen if Imperialist manages to win this series here, to win this match here. The game number four. Those Spiderlings are taking down mills left and right. He has the army advantage and forcing Engmar to split. That's the way you wanna handle the things. You don't have to commit to a full all out fight. And Irby, uh, Impy is even building up offensive towers here. Two tunnels protected by the battle tower. And another tower is coming up as well. Irby is going to call it GG now and the game is going to be over. The game number four will be won by Imperialist and we're going to jump right into the last game, into the second tiebreaker in the series. Game number five between Imperialist against Irby. Let's get to game number five. The deciding game started. Isengard against Elves. El Clasico it is. Good against evil ladies and gentlemen. Holy quacamole! 
I mean, that was an amazing series so far. Not one-sided at all. That's what I was expecting it to be. And whoever wins that will enter the quarterfinals and face in the quarterfinals against no one less but DJ Premier in the best of five. We have the green album player Imperialist from Russia against the yellow Isengards player Erby from Slovenia. Everyone was playing a great game. The only downside of the series so far is the fact that it was laggy a little bit. I mean, every lag is kind of annoying to deal with. But it's nothing about me, it's nothing about Talos, because, you know, I was hosting, it was laggy, Talos is hosting, <laughs> Talos close Google, <laughs> Talos close Google by Imperialist. Two Malone trees from Impi into the barracks potentially, on the other side we will have two furnaces into either the work pit, clan steading is also an option, but against elves, I don't know about that. I feel like the most safe uh, starting after two furnaces is definitely the Uruk pit. We have two Malone trees into the Uruk pit, I mean into the barracks, into the third Malone tree. Erby is saying we have, I have click loss, so he was actually wasting a lot of time here. And look how laggy it is though. Maybe I should host again. So we need to remake this game number 5, which is okay if you say it in the first 2-3 minutes of the game. Before anything else happens, I am absolutely fine with remaking it. But if you say it after 10 minutes, after losing a big fight... Of course, it's not going to count. So we're going to make a remake of the game number 5, boys. Alright, boys, we are remaking the game number 5. This matchup is the same. Isengard against Elves. El Clasico, good against Evil. You know how it is. Oh, it's my favorite, by the way. I like the good we against Evil matches the most. Maggie, That's why our good dice. against Evil tournament a couple of months ago was Why really fun for me to cast. Links? And now the game number 5, the deciding game, we will have the Isengard player Erby against the green elven player imperialist by the way guys those players they used they faced against each other in the last year's world championship as well imperialist against erby happened last year in the semi-finals unfortunately for imperialist he lost against erby and this was not a double elimination tournament it was only a single elimination tournament so erby was the one who was kicking out imperialist from the world championship to, to, uh, 2019 now it's his chance to pay back. Revenge time. Just ban them next tournament. <laughs> Alright, two Malone trees into the barracks, into the third Malone tree. Same start like before. We have two furnaces into the Uruk pit, into the third furnace from the player from Slovenia. Morgomi is using those sound effects. Like, uh, you know, I'm starving. I'm starving. I'm actually not starving, I'm actually... I was eating before I streamed today. <laughs> Alright. Istari, welcome. So we're gonna have potentially Pikemen and go for the creep first, or Urukai go for the pressure first. Let's see what Erby is gonna do. He's gonna go for the Urukai. On the other side, we will have Lorian Warriors from the Russian player Imperialist after three Malon trees. The Builders, they are normally moving immediately. Looking for a potential position to build another furnace at. He's gonna move with this builder potentially to the top side of the map. Let's see. And we have Urukai and Lorian Warriors joining the battlefield soon. Obviously, in this 1v1 situation, Urukai they should be easily able to out damage and out tank the Lorian Warriors. Even though Lorian Warriors got, I think, changed a little bit. They got, if I'm not mistaken, they got even nerfed this patch, if I'm not mistaken. Can tell. There is a Malone tree here at the bottom left side. And the builder from Imperialist is gonna be used for scouting. So he will be able to see this furnace here. You, this is something you should never do against goblins, by the way, because goblins are faster than your builder and they will be chasing you down and killing you. And imagine if he would start for some reason with archers, <laughs> then the builder would have, you know, would have been killed. The Lorian warriors are moving to the top side. I can't tell if the builder was able to see the Urukai. I think he was. I mean, the Urukai are able, were able to see the builder. But obviously, they have also more vision control. But we have Lorian archers now on the field. Only one battalion. Will this be enough to stop the Urukai? That is the question. You can always use the war chant and commit to the uh, Malon tree. But Impi will be using a wall hub to block this pathway here. You can always try to get in between these buildings here. Which is the best way if you want to burst it down. So it looks like you want to go to the backside first. 
Archers, they should be able to deal some damage before they can reach the Malone Tree. And we have Pikeman moving to the top side. The builder from the Isengard player will be spotted by those Lorien warriors. And they should be able to win potentially against the Pikeman. Lorien warriors against Pikeman. And Irby shouldn't take the fight here. That's why he is disengaging. Okay, Warshan has been used. The Malon tree is gonna get demolished just in time. So Urukai, they were not able to get any kind of experience here. Other power points still gained. Same amount of power points, obviously, from killing those Urukai, also gained by the Russian player Imperialist. Builder has to disengage, and we have get, we are getting crossbar men on the field. With the crossbar men, those Lorien warriors, they shouldn't be able to take down the furnace. But he's creeping at the same time the work layer at the left side of the river. So what those Lorien warriors did was actually buying time and forcing Irby to retreat. Otherwise, potentially, Irby was planning to go for the creep here at the top right side because his builder was here and he was waiting for the pikeman. So if he can go for the creep, he would get the treasure, the experience and the, and the power points. And then he would also capture this in and get those black orcs on the field. So those Lorien warriors, they were able to delay that. Which is very important. Okay, so one creep against zero, so he's gonna get level two pikemen here. Gonna get some treasure as well. Urukai, they have nowhere to go. They will get kind of cut down here, and they will be taken down. I mean, he was still able to take down one of the uh, Malon trees, which is not the end of the world. But Impi now has also the buff advantage, so he hopefully will be using that advantage and manages to take down at least one furnace. Lorien warriors, they are getting chased down. Urukai are faster than them, as you can see. And they will lose so much health. They might potentially be able to survive, but I see even some work packs coming now from the work pits level 1. And we have also some Revendal Lancers joining the battlefield from the stable. It's the second production building for Imperialist. Oh, nice trample into the Urukai. They are switching now to the shield ball formation. Lorien warriors are still remaining on the field, and he might use the rallying call here. On those lancers and on those Lorien warriors. He needs pikemen. Smart move to disengage with those crossbowmen. Otherwise, you would just die against the lancers. And the Lorien warriors are still remaining on the field, by the way, as Impi is creeping the second work layer at the top left side. The furnace here will be taken down as well. With a small fight going on here. The furnace... Is gonna get bursted down. This one should be protected for now. The pikemen are just a little bit too late. There is no point of trying to save the Urukai because they are only level 1. Okay, uh, Warpacks are fighting against the Lorian archers and trying to take down this Malon tree. Warpacks are one of these units. You will need multiple of these units in order to deal the damage and burst, it, burst down the Malon trees fast enough. Sending them out one by one is always risky. With a huge army now with archers and pikemen, and he has not used his rallying call once just yet. He might be able to capture this in here at the top right side with those lancers. And he might also group with of the uh, with the slow, uh, Revendal lancers and with those units here and go for the rallying call. But the problem is, he was wasting so much time, and Erby's war chan is gonna be ready soon as well. The builder has to be careful here, by the way, if he's not paying attention. He does pay attention and will be building a wool hub. Wool hub. War packs are at the bottom side. They will be able to see this Malon tree at the bottom left side and they will be able to take it down. We have more Lancers on the fields now. It might be a 1v1 situation between those War packs against Lancers. They are using the whole ability, which is going to replace the War Chant. 50% increased damage and armor, and that's going to be enough to force those Lancers to retreat. There is even a statue in between. So this Malon tree has a great protection here. Two production buildings, a statue in the front, and even building now the second one behind the Malon tree. So the only possible way of attacking it is actually this side or this side. A great protection, after all, for this Malon tree in the front, which is almost level two as well. Just engage on those archers. They are, pro you know, they have no protection, but the pikemen are coming now. I mean, since those war packs can't trample the enemy units, you also don't take any damage when you are going over this pikemen. They will try to finish off this Malon tree, which is almost level 2. I think they should be able to do that. But he might overcommit to that and might lose almost every single work pack afterwards. Without the whole ability, as you can see, they are dealing only a limited amount of damage, but the Malon tree has been taken down regardless. An Elven player will be able to force his opponent back in the middle of the map as well. 
They are getting also peasants on the field from the end. From the top right side. Both playing so good, exactly. That's what I'm expecting them to do. No mistakes at all. Both are playing very careful, very safe. And they are, they are full concentrated, by the way, in the final game in the best of five series. Oh, the builder is trapped here. The builder is trapped here from Irby. Oh, the builder has been taken down. The second Talos is saying no mistakes. Irby is losing one of his builders. And those lances at the bottom right side, they are committing to that furnace, which also will be taken down. That's like two huge victories in 20 seconds for the Russian player. He was able to take down the builder. He will also be able to take down this furnace at the bottom right side. Okay, Isengard has Lurz on the fields now as a hero. And Elven player is building more and more statues, which by the way, doesn't only give leadership to the enemy, uh, to the allied units, but also gives them fear resistant. And on top of that, it also reduces the cost of infantry units. Now, for example, the pikemen are like an example of those Mirkwood archers. They used to cost 800 normally. Now they cost only 736. Okay, double buff action here. Isengard has to use the cave pads uh, if he wants to win that fight. They are also using the trees around for the Elven passive. You can see they are getting stealthed. You can't even see them on the minimap anymore if they are getting invisible. Isengard... Oh, he was able to kill many Lancers at, actually at once. But that might be still a wrong commitment here. If Lords gets level 2 though, and uses the Carnage with the Splash damage, he might be able to do something here. With the Cave Pads, you need to be careful. When you use them too early like he did, he might be able to burst them down. And the debuff is gonna be gone. Which is not only a debuff, but also nullifying the leadership from the, lead uh, from the statue here, which is massive. But Alvin Player has now the Mist himself. That's gonna make it... Much more one-sided. Those archers are hitting like an absolute truck. And devastating the army of Isengard. Mist will be used on top of the enemy units. To debuff them. Lords. I can't see Lords anymore. You see retreating. I think he does. Here he is. He's level 2.5. Level 5 will be pretty much needed. But those pikemen from the Elven player Imperialist. They will be able to take down another furnace here from the, from the Slovenian player Erby. And right now we have 575. It's gonna drop down to 525 command points. He has almost 2000 resources collected though. He might go for Sharku potentially or for the upgrade on the work pit to level 2. Make another Uruk pit. He has many many different options. Is he trying to save for Saruman or something? Look how much money he has. I can't, I can't think about Irby cash floating that much. I mean for sure Saruman is gonna be a great choice. But I think he will lose his Lord C unfortunately. Lords might die here. Nice hit on the Revendal Lancers though. Uh, he's gonna use the Vision of Palantir on the Lords, which is gonna give him movement speed. To run away from the Elven army, which is mainly based on archers. Imagine if he has two battalions of Warc Riders here. They have zero protection of any pikemen. Lancers are diving in though. I don't know about these Lancers. They will be taken down, unfortunately, for the Elven player. He will be losing them lords. Oh, he will actually be able to save them lords. Has to run for his life. Can he get away here? He actually right click on lords and hopes for the best. But lords is fast enough. And he should be able to get away if he just keeps running without stopping. But lancers are coming to end this guy's career. And no, those are not even normal lancers. Those are the Re Linden Horse Archer Battalions. But Ooh, nice micro just in time pressing S. Otherwise, he would be riding right into the Uruk Pikeman. He's running for his life. This Lord is a survivor and refuses to die. Will he be able to get away, actually? That's the question. That's the, but that's what I want to know. But there are some Revandal Lancers and Irvi is like... Nah, I mean, Imperialist is like, you are not surviving this time. Your Lord is going to do go down. How he want to take Lords exactly. Lourdes has been taken down. We have a Siege Works level 2 upgrade is coming in as well. Irby lost a lot during this fight. He has 475 command points, 4 power points collected after Vision of Palantir, Warchan and Kribane. He needs 10 really fast. He needs devastation in this situation. On the other side, we have 7 power points collected by the Elven player. He's almost command points kept. has so many units on the field, so many archers on the field. And no transition being made into the Warc Riders just yet. And losing the Lords there was kinda unfortunate as well. The game is lagging, but Imperialist is playing a great game, game number 5. 
proving that he can play any faction just like Irby does. Not and not only the Goblin faction. Seven power points collected after Mist and Rallying Cold, which is available. He has 745 command points available against only 525. And the vision of Palantir was delaying his devastation big time. Devastation would be pretty much needed in this situation because he's running out of money all the time. The spikemen are getting killed in seconds. Great game on, by the way, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. We have Palistas joining the battlefield as well. He needs to make multiple crossbow men and Urukai and Pikemen. He has like he needs every sort of unit Isengard can offer right now, including the Vork Riders as well. And Elvin player will have to miss potentially for the next big fight ready, which can turn the fight easily. Like it can make the fight pretty much one-sided. And he has so many archers on the field that it's gonna be very difficult for Irby to deal with. He has only one Ballista without any protection. There are no pikemen to keep those crossbowmen alive. Luckily, he has like horse archer units only, and the Ballista is the worst siege weapon in the game against units. Like, anything pretty much is a better choice. Uh, the Drogate, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. He has 10 power points collected as well. Can go for the Elven Wood if he wants to. He has a lot of money as well. No heroes. Can go for the Glorfindel. Can go for Haldir, can save for Transuil or even Legolas or even Elrond. I think he's going for um, for Glorfindel now. Makes sense. We have Lords back in, on the field. Level 2 Carnage will be used. Level 4 is going to be unlocked. Lorien Archers are getting away. Nice micro. You can see yourself. Imperialis is microing everything. Sacrificing nothing. Like Leonidas would say in the movie of 300. Don't give them anything, but take everything. And GG well played, well deserved. Sportsman like from Urbisan and Imperialist will be able to win the best of five series 3 2 against Irby and moving to the quarterfinals against DJ Premier. Holy quackamole, boys. What a great performance from both the players. I like it.